Don't watch this video. For the love of God, do not watch this video. All right, fine. You could watch the video if you want, but I warn you, it has bad audio. Now, I filmed this video, I think the things that I say in the video are valuable, and after I filmed it, I noticed the bad audio, but I continued making this video and editing, and I spent like close to an hour and a half editing this thing. After all of that work, I watched it back, and I noticed the sound quality is annoying because I filmed it outside and it happened to be windy, so there's a lot of wind noises in the video. Um, after filming, editing everything, I felt like, why shouldn't I upload it? I spent all of this time filming and editing the thing. Uh, I felt like, you know, I should upload it because I spent all of that time, but when, I, when it came down to it, I didn't want to upload something that would hurt my brand. And I came to the conclusion, this learning lesson, bad audio equals bad video. And I will never forget it from this point forward. I'm going to make sure my audio is clean and I thought I'd share that message with you guys. If you guys are making a video, it's more forgivable to have, you know, grainy video quality than it is to have crappy audio. You know, you could have like grainy kind of amateur looking video and still have good, good audio and it be a good video. But if you have HD quality video and crappy audio, that's annoying and people are going to click away from that video. So even though I spent all of that time, I have to, you know, figure out what is the best move moving forward. And I decided, well, I, at first I wasn't going to upload this, but instead I thought I'd turn this into a learning lesson that I would share with you guys. Take that negative, turn it into a positive and make this video and have that, that lesson. Remember this? Bad audio equals bad video. Even if it has brilliant video quality, even though it has brilliant ideas, bad audio is annoying, it, it turns people off, so don't do it. So if you'd like to kind of give get an idea of what the, the video and the audio sound like, here you could watch my video now. How do you get more views to your video, more traffic, more customers to see your video, and drive more people to your business? I'd like you to really think about that. How would you get more traffic? How would you use video to get more traffic and more customers if you owned a small restaurant? Say you specialize in the spaghetti and meatball dish, or say you're a coach. Say that you are a life coach or a business coach or say that you are a fitness coach or a health coach. How would you use online video and how would you get views and traffic to that specific video? Here's a simple three step process that will really help you out with that. Step number one, you want to identify your customer and make it feel as though you are speaking directly to them. When your ideal customer is watching your video, you want it to feel like you you are specifically talking to them. But how do you do that specifically when it feels like you're just kind of talking to this inanimate object, this camera? You want to identify your customer, but how do you do that? Well, you take out a piece of paper and you draw a figure, maybe you draw a stick man and give them a name. This person represents your typical or average customer. Even give him a name, name him Bob. Now Bob represents your typical customer and Bob, he has certain needs. Now, what are those specific needs? And Bob has certain fears and frustrations. What are those fears and frustrations? So for example, if you're a health coach, what are the specific needs, wants, desires, fears, frustrations, thoughts, 
that are coming out of your average customer? What is that driving force, say you are a health coach or a fitness coach, that prompts your average customer to finally say, hey, I need help with this. I'm sure if you were a fitness or a life coach, a lot of people would be fed up with being overweight. A lot of people would be fed up and frustrated if they had certain illnesses and they needed to feel better or they lacked energy and they felt like they needed to do something about it or they just completely knew what they needed to do with their diet but felt frustrated because they had a hard time sticking to it. Whatever it may be, give all of these traits to Bob. What are those fears and frustrations? And then go to the next level and really try to brainstorm the basic demographics of your average customer. So what is your average customer's age range? What gender are they? And if you already named your avatar Bob and most of your business comes from females, then maybe you want to change their name to Bobina or something like that. Really try to dig down on the specifics. And then when you are communicating through video or other content, even newsletters or content that you produce, speak directly to Bob or Bobina. That will draw your ideal customer to that content because it's like it's speaking directly to them and you have them in your mind when you are speaking directly to them through the video camera. Step number two, share your content where Bob or Bobina or your typical customer regularly hang out. So if you are a fitness coach, then your average customer, or Bob, is probably hanging out on fitness blogs or fitness forums online. So if you are a fitness coach, be sure that you are posting on fitness blogs and you are really paying attention to what other people are saying. If your channel is centered around video games, playing video games, or doing video game reviews, then make sure you are getting engaged in online communities where that is happening and people are talking about that. So that could be video game forums, video game Facebook groups, video game blogs, and become friends with other people who are in your niche. So find other people who do similar things that you do, like maybe you do video game reviews and you partner up with someone who uh, does video game let's plays where they record themselves playing a game and adding commentary to it. Step number three is feedback and refine. Feedback and refine. What could that possibly mean feedback and refine well first you want to find feedback so if you post a video you really want to pay attention to your comments if you are on, on if you are on online forums you really want to pay attention to what people are saying on there and then refine refine your content based on what other people are saying say a lot of people are asking questions on a specific topic well well perhaps you can meet the needs of those questions and drive your content in that direction so you can meet the needs of your customer and make sure you have a communication with your audience so even with the comments themselves make sure you comment back and check out their content if they have any content i know uh, whenever I see a YouTube comment left on my video, I go to their channel to see if they make videos themselves. Um, I say sometimes they do make videos, a lot of times they don't, they're just people who like to leave comments on videos, but a lot of the times um, there are also other people who make videos, so being able to see other people and see your customer can really make a huge difference because you're making real connections with real people. Anyway, um, by doing that you, you gather more, more um, more customers, more loyalty. It's fun because you get to meet people and friends and see what they're doing. But also, uh, in this process, make sure to also refine Bob. 
So say you learn a new need or a new little thing or a new detail on uh, your average customer. So for example, say that 70 to 80% of your audience is between the ages of 20 and 25. That's where most of your views come from already. Well, think about the average need of a 20 to 25 year old. It's probably a lot different than someone who's 40 to 45 or someone who's 10 to 15. So when you are further refining Bob and further gathering insight on your average customer, um, make sure to take that into account and talk directly to Bob. And the more you refine Bob and figure out who Bob is as a person, the easier it is to communicate and talk with them. So that is all I had to say and I have a question for you. Do you make videos right now and if not, do you own a business? Are you a coach or own a business? Or are you or aspire to be an entertainer on YouTube or Facebook? Please let me know in the comments, like if you're a health coach, just write I'm a health coach in the comments, or if you're an entertainer on YouTube, uh, link me to your YouTube page. That's all I had to say for today. Peace. Mike Marino videos.